before I even could Kype, I've seen probably all the movies that existed on the internet that were, yeah, that evolved around kiting. Um, so Nesh House was one of those. And ever since, uh, since I was a kid, it was like something that stuck to my mind. And it was uh, as I was kind of making my way to want to be a pro kiter in 2008, I think the first Nash House video came out. And it's something that I've wanted to be a part of ever since I've joined Nash. And it was one of the reasons I wanted to join Nash was to see this sick team house, the team vibe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dream coming true, actually. It's, uh, it's something I've, I've always looked up to as a kid, and now it's, now it's happening again. Something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm stoked to be able to be part of Nash House Brazil. So we had a rail session on the first day. It was kind of a nice, kind of a nice warm-up session, or we we thought so. We didn't set up the easiest rail. We set up uh, two metal handrails and up and a down over sand, rock, trash, sandbar. It probably wasn't the best thing to be gapping, but we set that up. Kohan had his first rail session ever. You think it's gonna work? Ah, yeah. Hey, you would. What could go wrong? Why not keep it like this? Yeah, maybe we should keep the rail on the buggy, we thought. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> so if you just both stand and hold it, and I'll drive slow. Brought the sliders here. I'm gonna set it up now. So, uh, what's, what's happening? I'm just thinking. We're trying to figure out what's the best location to put the rail, because the ideal situation would be to slide over this sand pit um, but yeah I'm trying to figure out what angle to put it and we have two pieces which gives us quite a long slider but uh, yeah Ewan's the master so he's working his brain cells to figure it out <laughs> cool well we if you're gonna do it it's gonna be now well the wind yeah so you want to put that thing in front of it put that here yeah This nice young man well, well, went out to mow oh, oh, to see if he we we could make a show oh, oh, to my rattle to my roo ra The thing about setting up rails is just getting the angle right, having a test pilot, all that, and then having the crew help move the rail into position and then once you're confident that it's in the right spot, you're gonna start going for it. So who's the test pilot? Test pilot. You were meant to be together Think you'll make the perfect pair You'll never change for the better It's not like you'd even care You go and bother him, he's gonna leave you blue The echoes of the past will come right back
We started in Taiba, which is kind of the classic freestyle spot over the last years. It's a really nice wind for biggish kites, 10, 12, 14 meters. It's kind of like playing a PlayStation game with cheat codes. We always used to say it's like you can come out here and do tricks that you wouldn't be able to do anywhere else in the world. And then it, you learn the trick in Brazil and then you haven't actually learned it for another year because it takes you a year to do it somewhere else again. That kind of talks a lot about the how good the lagoons are here and how good the wind is is you can just do stuff that you can't do anywhere else in the world. Yeah, it was cool to to do a bit of freestyle again, especially when you're around a lot of good guys like Leo and, and you. And yeah, you want to kind of be pushing yourself as well. After that, we traveled to Tatajuba, uh, which is at the moment uh, the big air hotspot in Brazil.
huge freestyle day yesterday, rode all day, and then got in the car, drove up to Tatajuba, it's about five hours north, and it's uh, just going to be windy, we're going to explore some new places, I've never been up here before, so that's pretty cool, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Would you normally go here? Probably not, no. <laughs> but I have actually, every year I've wanted to come up north and explore, but I've never had the, the excuse or the motivation to do it. So luckily, Dr. Borg has uh, chucked me in a car, brought me up here, and I'm here. I had this stupid idea in mind. <laughs> Let's be honest, Tatajuba, you have those big, big dunes, and I thought, why don't we drive a buggy up there and drive it downhill while sitting on the back of the buggy and try to jump off. And it's not really what we are trained to do and what our gear is meant to be doing, so do not try this at home, kids. Don't. Just us. I need help. Not here to kill myself. Yeah, like half, start halfway, and then just like if I, I do, think this has got so much if I do, power though, if you shoot out, there's no way you keep going. No, no, no. So there's no, but well, you can keep going that way. What you doing? So we found this massive dune. I got told by the locals that it's 80 meters high, and the idea is to have me sit on the back of the buggy. I'm gonna drive downhill, meaning upwind. Con's gonna hold me on top of the buggy, and at some point he's gonna let go. And you see, you can see how high I'll get. <laughs> Hopefully not too high, because the other side of the lagoon is also 80 meters high. Uh, I mean, of the dune. So going straight down. Don't want, yeah, exactly. Don't want to fly over the dune. That's for sure. Shall we have a look? Yeah. So what's this? So this is the other side of the dune, <laughs> and I am like shaking when I'm standing here. Like I'm scared of heights almost when I'm here. It's like a proper like ski piece. I reckon if you had a snowboard, you could just snowboard down. So yeah, definitely don't want to fly over it. It's actually Stig's birthday, so we're gonna celebrate proper. Just getting here in Jericho Cuara for the weekend. Full set. Look at this. Look at this jacket he's got. Prepared. So you know it's serious. This is like um, the dune where you can watch the sunset from Jericho Cuara. It's very, very known. It's where all the tourists come to. And we wanted to jump the dune, but um, like half of the dune is gone. So it's not too impressive, but um, it's a beautiful sunset. Yellow. Um, now we can go again, Luca. <laughs> Give us a little brief view. 
we were chilling on the dude. <laughs> we're gonna go for some beers. And we're watching a cute couple uh, kissing and making out. <laughs> In a few seconds, they'll either get naked and wiggle or uh, get down on a knee. Right here. Oh, it's not sharp. It's not sharp. <laughs> it's too wiggly. So what are, what are we going to get into tonight? I don't know how far this camera can, can follow us. In my house. I got a letter this morning, boy. Hey, hey, honey. I got a letter this morning, boy. Hey, hey. Good morning, chaps. Good morning. Good morning. What happened yesterday? We celebrated Stick's birthday. Was it any good? It was really good. Yeah. How are you feeling? Well, I have to say, I feel pretty fine. So that's good. So we're in Jerry, it's beautiful, it's windy. Some guys are winging, but I was forbidden to bring my wing. I was not allowed. Uh, don't, not allowed. Talk, don't, don't talk, don't talk. talk. He's not allowed to wing. Why not? He's allowed to look at the winging, but he's not allowed to wing. It's a kite video, mate. Yet. Kite, <laughs> kite boarding, not winging. Uh, yeah, we just came to check out the, the beach to see if there's some here. waves to maybe surf, but there's yeah. absolutely yeah. zero. <laughs> So that's not happening. But it is already really windy, which is a good thing. Real true. Team Nash on holiday, cheers, mate. <laughs> What's up with the hair? The hair. <laughs> I know you have to bring it up. He took the kitchen scissors to his head. He was feeling a bit hot. So. But uh, he's starting to think about reconversion of the, his kiting career. Yeah. We gave it a try yesterday. Yeah, yeah. His kitchen scissors haircuts. We went Jerry last night, it didn't work. So. <laughs> <laughs> we went home early, his haircut broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's looking good though. Looks alright, I think. I think oh, I did a good job. Thank you. I like it. Word to me. There's no hair at the side of the Red Bull hat anymore though, so. But there's a bit that. behind. What's happening? What are we doing? We're going for a downwinder. Brazil is known for its downwinders, so of course we need its riders out. But um, the boys are setting up their gear right now. I see a torch, I see a pivot. We're stoked. We're gonna awesome. do like. All the way down there. Follow the wind. That's good, eh? Follow the wind. Follow the wind. Yes. That's the lifestyle. And the next day we did a downwind there from uh, Jerry to Tatajuba. It was pretty fun, we stopped at the river mouth. I personally didn't jump over any boats because I was messing around in the waves, but uh, I saw the guys jump over some boats and the images look pretty sick, as you can see right here. The guys were a bit, uh, they were getting a bit, uh, a bit angry at the end. 
that were like because Yina jumped and he like he, he hit a chop just before he jumped and he like crashed and then he almost hit the boat and then after that the guys were like uh uh no more the car was still on the other side so we, we still had to keep them sort of as a friend so they would take us over but that didn't seem to be that big of a problem yeah I could have gone wrong for sure <laughs> That was sick. I saw even Jasper do his first kite to border. What is it? You jump as high as you can, you pull one side, you grab the handle, take the board off, put the board back, pull even more on the kite, do a second loop and you land. I know the fury, but the big dogs here know the practice, how to put it into action. <laughs> This is the furthest north I've ever been. Definitely feel the temperature difference from here to where I usually go. I think we're pretty close to the equator here and you, you can feel it. The wind's stronger, it's humid, it's, uh, yeah, it's hot, but it's, yeah, we're here for the wind and that's what we've got. It's, it's similar up here for the big air riding as it is down south for the freestyle riding. As in the big air riders don't come here for the most crazy gnarly conditions but they come here to progress their riding because it's the same thing you have strong winds every day same direction and you can really work on tricks and yeah we had some great riding there much stronger winds went to Guryu which is a, a kind of famous big air spot over the last year or two as well and I think they had a competition there the big air kite league not long ago and so it was cool to go ride that spot. Uh, we had some nuking winds that day. And then got in the car and now we're in Baragrangi, which is uh, even about two and a half, three hours further north again. And we're at this amazing mangrove spot. Between Baragrangi and Makapa, there's a, there's a big river mouth. And the river mouth uh, is the end of the mangroves. And the mangroves is basically a forest that is surrounded by water, by seawater. So every time it's, it's high tide, it fills completely up and you're in a complete different vibe than when it's low tide. When it's low tide, it's just like these angry looking trees and crabs and alligators and stuff everywhere. And now that it's high tide, it becomes a, yeah, just that fluffy kind of feeling with like nice looking trees and everything looks just so beautiful and, and, and playful. To me, riding the mangroves, it was, it was honestly the part that I was looking forward to the most. Uh, you can do big air, you can do free ride, and even on some days when it's a bit lighter, you can do some freestyle. Uh, it's super flat and there's like a section for any discipline, basically. There's parts where you can like sort of go through all the mangroves and find your own kind of maze in the mangroves. And, and then you have these fishermen being, moving around in boats, uh, trying to catch some fish for, fish for dinner. Um, so it's a very yeah, special place to be, to be kiting, it's a very unique experience and I'm very glad that I've had the chance to experience it a couple of times. It's one big playground.
Am I, is this part of the interview? How's your big air game? <laughs> You'll find out soon. <laughs> There's a happy child at home. There's a happy child at home. In my memory I could see. Memory I could see. Standing out upon the hill. Standing out upon the hill. In the shadow of the tree. Shadow of the tree. If I only had my way. If I only had my way. It would, it would give, give my heart a thrill. It would <laughs> Ewan is just finding excuses to tell us why he didn't do a cartoon of water yesterday. Behind him was a big <laughs> But the sadness of it all, but the sadness of it all, I could never more return, never more return, to the happy child at home, to the happy child at home, matters not how much I earn, not how much I earn, if I only had my way, if I only had my way, it would, it would give, give my heart, heart a thrill, it would give my heart a thrill, just to simply wander back, just to simply wander back to the cabin on the Back. 